the landslide that happened at around 2 a.m. this morning is a very distressing incident. Damage has been quite extensive and uh, quite a lot of uh, effort will have to be expended. A section of the park connector near an HDB BTO project has been closed after the landslide spilled soil into the nearby canal early Friday morning. Beloved pandas Jia Jia and Kai Kai will be staying in Singapore at the River Wonders for another five years. Hello, you're watching The Big Story with me, Chow Su An. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel to stay up to date with our live news updates. Now, if you visit the Ulu Pandan Park connector in Clementi often, you'll have to change your route. A section of the park connector near an HDB BTO project has been closed after a landslide spilled soil into the nearby canal earlier this morning. MP for the area, Sim Ann, said that the stretch near the Clementi North Arc construction site in Clementi Avenue 6 will be affected. The section of the park connector from Gimmore to AYE will be closed on both banks of the Ulu Pandan Canal. HDB's checks of the surrounding blocks have indicated that the buildings are structurally sound. One passerby sustained minor injuries but has been discharged and is now resting at home. Miss Sim said that the landslide was a distressing incident, but thankfully with no major injuries. HDB is deeply concerned about this incident and is doing checks on all our BTO sites. I think it is premature to comment on the specific causes of this particular incident, but HDB will get to the bottom of this. Except for the immediate area that's been affected by the soil displacement in the canal, uh, we are not expecting any utility supplies to the surrounding areas to be affected. Right now, uh, HDB uh, is coordinating with other agencies and this includes UV and N parks uh, to uh, deal with uh, the aftermath of this incident. And uh, the immediate priority right now uh, is to restore water flow uh, into the Ulu Pandan Canal because that's a very important part of our drainage system. We know that many residents use this stretch of park connectors regularly for recreation uh, as well as moving from point to point. They will cause some inconvenience uh, but we do seek the public's understanding. The Building and Construction Authority has issued a stop work order to builders at the Housing Board Clementi North Arc built to order construction site. But Ms. Sim said that buyers do not need to worry. She said that according to preliminary assessments, HDB sees no reason to delay key collection beyond the dates already communicated to the buyers, but they will continue to monitor the situation. The earliest key collection is estimated to be in December. Joining us now to shed some light on the possible causes and implications of the landslide is Engineer David Ng, Institute of Engineers, Civil and Structural Technical Committee Chairman. Thanks so much for joining us today, David. On the landslide at the Clementi construction site, what could be some of the possible causes? Where do you think the issue lies? In your opinion, for example, could it be the structure, issues with the land integrity? What do you think it could be? The actual causes for the land movement uh, that happened in Clementi will need to be thoroughly investigated with the uh, fact find, fact gathering from site before the actual causes uh, can be um, can be explained. Uh, but uh, from my point of view, what we normally uh, encounter, uh, these are some of the common factors that could affect the the uh, movement of the slope. So one of the common factors will be the um, the change in the profile of the slope on top, and as well as the change in the drainage condition on top of the slope. And some other factors are such as the change in the loading condition on top of the slope that could actually add loading onto the slope. Yeah. So uh, then the other uh, uh, factors, the change in loading or the change in the, the slope profile, right? This, this will actually be changing the loading on the slope as well as uh, causing the uh, uh, water to soak the, the slope and therefore weaken the slope and therefore lead to the slope movement. So how do you think this will impact the structures around the site? I mean, it's near an MRT, a BTO project, and several other HDB blocks. Is there any risk at all that they could be affected? And what are some ways these risks could be mitigated? All right, based on the 
current uh, ground movement that happened on site, uh, the, there could be some uh, movement that will be propagated to the surrounding. And this ground movement will definitely have some uh, impact to the, to, the, to the structures and soil in the surrounding. Uh, but fortunately, the HDB blocks and the uh, MRT structures, the viaduct structures are, are all founded on a deep power foundation. So for structures founded on deep power foundation, they will be uh, very stable. And therefore, it's, it's very unlikely that these structures will be affected by such a, a slope movement. So the safety of the structures, uh, from my point of view, I, I think they will be uh, uh, still very safe. So there's no issue on the safety concern for these structures. Yeah, but uh, there will be some localized area uh, on the ground that may need to be improved and stabilized with some slope uh, stabilization methods, such as uh, ground improvement with uh, injection of ground, installing some soil nailing or reinforcement with uh, geosynthetics and geocrease material. So this will, this will actually uh, have to repair the slope and, 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 and ensure the stability of the slope after the repair. Then uh, the situation can be uh, uh, safe after that. So there is no, um, yeah, so other than the ground movement that we observe on site, I believe the surrounding structures, including the HDB block and the, the, the MRT viaducts, they are all uh, unlikely to be affected by the ground movement due to the deep foundation, deep power foundation that they are on. Thank you so much for your time, David. This has been Engineer David Ng, Institute of Engineers, Civil and Structural Technical Committee Chairman. And in other news, owners of electric motorcycles in Singapore will soon have it a bit easier. With two trials to be set, sorry, with two trials set to be launched by the Land Transport Authority. The aim is to make it more convenient for users to swap their batteries and is part of the nation's push to make land transport environmentally friendly. What we have to do is also deal with the issues that are already alive uh, today that we have to deal with. And one of them is, of course, uh, EV charging, uh, because we know uh, that there is a need to ensure that EV charging is sufficiently available to dispel the anxiety that uh, EV users may have with respect to range. And that is why we have uh, spelled out clearly our goal, which is to deploy EV chargers in 2000 HDB car parks so that every HDB estate will be EV ready by 2025. The two applications that have been approved by the LTA are expected to start in September and run for 12 months. To further support the move towards cleaner vehicles, new training and certification courses have also been launched. The European Union's drug regulator has backed two separate COVID-19 vaccine boosters developed by Moderna and the team of Pfizer and BioNTech. The booster shots, which are also known as bivalent shots, have been updated to combat the BA1 version of Omicron as well as the original virus. The shots will be rolled out in Europe upon the European Commission's approval. Meanwhile, advisors to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have voted to recommend the use of booster shots redesigned to target the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants. Canada has secured 12 million doses of the new booster and Moderna will start delivering them from Friday. And good news for the panda lovers out there, Tia Tia and Kai Kai will be staying in Singapore at the River Wonders for another five years. The giant pandas who arrived in Singapore in 2012 as part of a 10-year loan will now remain here until 2027. This was part of a deal that Mandai Wildlife Group signed with Chinese authorities to extend their stay. The pair gave birth to a cub Lala in August last year. And looks like Tia Tia and Kai Kai are having a blast here, celebrating their birthdays in advance this month with presents and cake. They turn 14 and 15 this month. And those are our top stories. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Chao Suen and I'll see you next week on The Big Story.